Welcome back. Today I'm going to be filling the cooling system on this snowmobile using a snap-on vacuum filler. You can get these from a lot of different brands, but the one I have is a snap-on. Um, I've never done this before. I've never used this tool before. This is my first time with this, this setup, but it should work pretty good. So what I'm going to do is take this rubber piece, set it down inside, and actually those are both on so I'm going to turn both of these off hook it up to my air hose and actually I'll turn it around so you can potentially see the gauge okay. so I plug this thing in here hook my air hose up and when I turn this on, it should pull a vacuum on the cooling system. Now, if you watched my other video, I ran this for like a minute without any coolant in it. And I wasn't really concerned about overheating the engine, but later that night I was thinking about it. And hopefully I didn't wreck the O-ring or the seal inside the water pump itself. Uh, we'll find out here pretty shortly. So I'm going to turn this lever on that's connected to the air hose. It's going to draw a vacuum in the system. Okay, so now it's got a good vacuum in the system. It's at like uh, 26, 27 inches of vacuum, which is right where we want it. Now a snap-on wants you to leave this there. And if you look, you're not gonna be able to see it, but all my rubber hoses and everything are collapsed because of the vacuum. And that's gonna draw the coolant down inside. So I've got my mix of coolant. This is like 60-40, so with the snowmobile, you usually mix them a little bit more than 50-50. So this is my 60-40 mix. It's holding pressure good enough for me. So I take this, drop it into my container, and I've actually got to purge the hose first, which is going to let the coolant drop. So when I open this valve, it's going to start sucking coolant from this jug. I'm going to open it real slow. Oops, got a little too much. So it's actually probably going to spray some out of this other hose when I turn this back on. But I've purged the system, so now what I need to do is put it back into full vacuum. Okay, now I've got this thing under a full vacuum. When I turn this on, it should fill the system up with coolant. And again, I'm gonna open this slowly. And you can see the coolant level dropping. And as it's filling up, the gauge is dropping, and so the suction on the system is going down. And that's all the pressure we had, so I'll go ahead and turn these valves off. Disconnect my air hose. Pull this hose out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that hose elevate it and try to just drip this down inside of there because it's not totally full so that didn't work quite the way I thought it would so now to pull this thing off they don't want you to grab it by the gauge you reach down in here give the rubber a little twist and it comes off and now I'll have to drain these hoses out so one of the advantages of using this tool this is a heat exchanger off of a snowmobile this sits back under the seat that's a pretty normal way for them to run it. So this thing sits way back here, um, down low, and this is hard to get coolant back inside of. So by using the vacuum filling method, it should have sucked coolant back into the heat exchanger. There's also another one at the front of the tunnel, same type of deal. This should have filled those things up by using vacuum to actually 
suck the coolant all the way back into those areas. It is usually pretty difficult to fill up a snowmobile. I've got this one full up to that line. I'm gonna bring it a little bit more because I want that level above the head region. So we'll go ahead and we'll just pull that up a little bit more than that. Okay, and that's now higher than the cylinder head. It might actually be a little bit over full. I don't remember where the marks you were supposed to fill this one to are. But I've got that full. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cap back on. And I'm going to take this thing outside and run it. Now if you don't have a vacuum filler, snowmobiles are kind of difficult to bleed. And that's because that heat exchanger I showed you earlier sits at an angle like this. So in order to get the air that's trapped in that out, what you have to do is lift the front of the snowmobile. So I'm going to pull this thing outside. I'm going to drop the tail end of it off the rollers, leave the front end up a little bit, and hopefully that's enough elevation to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and run this thing until it gets up to operating temperature. All right, so I've got it outside. I can run it for a little while. I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up, run it up until it gets warmed up. I could probably probably stand to have the front end just a little bit higher but this will, this should work it is still nose high and yes I still have a lot of stuff to figure out on this thing Alright, so while I was running it, I was feeling these hoses down in here. The one that comes out the bottom side of this is actually the thermostat. So once the thermostat opens, it allows coolant to flow down through there. Once you start to get a little bit of heat through that, you're starting to, uh, you're starting to actually bleed the system. Um, if you saw, I'm not sure how well it's going to capture it with where the camera's at, but I was reaching up underneath the tunnel area, touching the heat exchanger back there and it started to get just warm back at that heat exchanger there and I can see that the coolant bottle has dropped some that means that there was a little bit of an air pocket somewhere and as it ran it cycled the coolant through and got rid of that I also noticed I'm leaking coolant around just this one head bolt so I'll have to pull that one head bolt back out kind of see what's going on there um, they're supposed to seal down against the head I probably have a little bit too much paint or something and it's just not real happy so I'll have to take a look at that as well but other than that this thing should be good to go on its cooling system so now I'm on to all of the other things I have to do to make this to actually rideable thanks for watching and I'll see you later